When Steel Talks, everybody listens. Well, this is When Steel Talks, and we're very pleased to be in the penthouse of NYU at the Frederick Laus Theater in the village in New York City. And we are here with Professor Jonathan Haas, who is um, the director of the NYU Steinhardt Profession Program. You're the chairman of uh, the music department, essentially the profession studies. And we are so pleased to finally sit down with you for the second time in about four years. The last time was 2011. It was a little bit short, but very informative. And we thought it was a definitely a good time that we should follow up and see what's been happening. I mean, we've been part of it as well. We've been privileged to uh, have been here to capture the performances of the New York University NYU Steel Ensemble. But we just want to really settle in and talk to you personally about how it's progressed and generally reintroduce the global audience to Professor Jonathan Haas because as you know, there are probably still a lot of people who don't know exactly who you are, what you're about, and how integral you are to Pan in New York. Oh, so welcome you. to When Steel Talks. Oh, it's wonderful to be here. All right. Um, I'm just going to go over a bit of your own accomplishments for the benefit of the audience. Chime in with the updated version, if you will. Okay. But <laughs> I'm just really happy for it to be picked up. Um, you are a globally renowned timpanist in your own right. You have performed around the world, places like London, Australia, France, the former Czechoslovakia, which is now the Czech Republic, and uh, Slovakia, uh, Turkey, of course, uh, the northern American continent, and you have been described as a solo virtuoso timpanist. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. I mean, you've been performing for more than 30 years. Yes. How many years are we looking at in actuality? Well, when I started uh, my quest to bring timpani to the forefront, that would have been 1980 when I gave the first Carnegie Hall mm -hmm. recital hall concert okay. using timpani only. And everybody said, you're crazy. You can't do it. <laughs> I said, oh, yeah. I, I can do it. Just and watch. And you have done it. Yeah. And you're also a conductor. Very Excellent. much. Talk to me a bit more about Jonathan Haas. Bring us up to date as to what you've been doing throughout the years because you're also, I believe, are you still on the board of uh, Juilliard? Uh, I'm uh, working with the Juilliard Pre-College. I'm on the okay. Pre-College faculty. Okay. So a lot of the young folks ages from 12 to about 16 or 17, mm -hmm. uh, it's a high school program and uh, many of them find their way to NYU <laughs> as well to the major conservatories yeah. and other mm -hmm. universities. But it's a wonderful opportunity for a student to start very young and stay with me for many that years. It's fantastic. I could only imagine what that's like. So briefly, your first introduction to the steel pan instrument was about when you were eight years old and you saw it in the Bahamas. Is that uh, correct to this that, point in time? That's, that's uh, precisely okay. what happened. We went to the Bahamas on a family trip uh, at a time when the Bahamas had just sort of been discovered as a destination because we lived in Chicago yeah. and boy we had to get out of those winters. <laughs> and uh, lo and behold we were there over New Year's and throughout the entire island area that we were in, uh, Grand Bahama, uh, there were steel pans playing. And I'd never heard the, the sound of them. And then after okay. that... It remained part of your experience. Very much. Right. You've been at NYU for about, what, now 11 years? Uh, I'm going on my 11th year. Okay, yeah. so, right. And when you came into uh, the establishment, you thought you wanted to make sure or attempt the steel pan instrument as part of the percussive experience here. Exactly. How was that received when you first tabled that proposal? Well, when I, uh, when I came to NYU, I had a number of uh, qualifications that I asked the administration uh, that they sort of had to do f for me to develop the program as, as it exists now. One of, that, one of them was a great space, which we're sitting in, the percussion <laughs> just, penthouse. Just one of the great spaces here. And yeah. then we had to have a lot of symphonic percussion instruments purchased, mm -hmm. and they did that. <laughs> and then when I said to them, I need a steel pan opportunity, that's how I phrased it. It wasn't, I, I needed steel pans. Because I've noticed there's a lot of schools 
and programs where they have steel pants, but they don't know what to do with them because it, it's a complicated virtuosic mm -hmm. instrument. Um, I said to them, I needed the opportunity to develop a program. And they said, okay, fine. And that, set, that was the setting uh, to begin to develop a program that started with, I think there were three students here when I first came in. Okay. And this coming fall, there'll be 25. So and these are performing in the NYU Steel Ensemble. Absolutely. Every, the NYU Steel, we call it NYU Steel. Okay, because Ensemble has been dropped now. Yeah, we use it or we can drop it. You know, it's, it's yeah, all good. Okay. But I like calling it NYU, NYU Steel. Steel. It gives yeah. it a distinctive okay. quality mm -hmm. to it. Uh, is an ensemble in which everybody must play. And not once all the ensembles are like that. But once you're a percussive major. Right. And we tell people when they audition for us, uh, when they come and look at the school, that that's one of the things that they are going to have to do. So the steel pan instrument is mandatory, mandatory. and they are made aware of this. Exactly. Okay. Now, here's the reason behind it. First and foremost, which is inarguable, which is, is the most unique and gorgeous sound, <laughs> right? My opinion and lots and lots of... Other opinions uh, as well. Of yeah. opinions. Um, also, in order to master this instrument, not just play it as an amateur, but to really begin to play it at a level uh, approaching to the, the great uh, uh, pianist, that there has to be an understanding of harmony, mm -hmm. of tonal harmony, or doesn't it necessarily have to be tonal, right? Because we have a lot of composers now who are writing atonal music for pans. Um, but my idea was is that this was going to really fortify their tonal harmony understanding of pitch, of, of, uh, of harmony, of melody, and then of course of groove and community. And while being exposed to sometimes a different culture at the same point in time. Oh, yeah. absolutely. And, and New York and being the melting pot, you thought it was just a great space for that. What, what could be more <laughs> in the middle, of a perfect in the middle, place? Yeah. So the cultural aspect of being located within the melting pot, New, New York, York City, City Brooklyn, Greenwich Village, Brooklyn, you and with the Brooklyn Sea Locusts right across yeah. the water, everything just came together, and it was the perfect uh, opportunity and uh, mandate for you to run with. Right now, it started slowly, as mm -hmm. in anything that's going to be really good, but has to start somewhere. Yeah. And then, of course, the, the most important part of the puzzle was Josh Quillen. Yes, the director of NYU who Steel. Who is the director of the ensemble. And uh, the backstory behind all of this is that at the University of Ohio, Larry Snyder, mm -hmm. who was the head of that percussion program, I went to his school because I was playing a timpani concerto. And Larry said, would you like to hear my steel band ensemble? And I said, sure. Of course, because that was close to And parts. I couldn't believe mm. how great it was. And he also was telling me about concerts where the concert hall was sold out. And I was, I was really taken by that. So when I came back to NYU with this whole idea, um, Larry Snyder said, one of my top students, former students, Josh Quillen, Hmm. may be interested in being the director of your ensemble. So Larry Snyder really, I, I give him credit for inspiring me to do it, encouraging me to do mm -hmm. it, and then also identifying Josh. The key now, person yeah. to really pull it together. Excellent. Yeah. And he's been with you ever since. Oh, he's, it, 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 it's <laughs> his. It really his. is his. And, and he performs each time with the orchestra. Oh, You've yeah. seen him on stage and he solos as well. And um, you've had a, a number of performances here, some very, in this very same space, the penthouse, and of course in the theater downstairs, and of course your external um, engagements, but there's a, a lot has been accomplished in so many years. Um, when you first started, did you see this far down the road? Did you see the success it has become in a relatively short space of time, the popularity, the growth of the, the ensemble and the students' interests. Well, you know, it, it's in the character of any percussionist in general to always have that hope yeah, and yeah. that expectation of if you, if you develop something really well and the music speaks, mm. then the people are going to come. Yeah. And we started with maybe 12 or 14 people, came up mm -hmm. to the penthouse at our first concert a long time ago. 
and certainly the the students who were going to NYU, they had no idea what was going on. But once it caught on, oh, it it caught on. Try. You'll notice probably in our last concert we had four string players from the string program yes. playing percussion. And it was, they were having the time of their life. Now it's good for their rhythm and it's good for their harmony mm -hmm. as well. So we're seeing a, a, the ability to expand Girl the ensemble, yeah. um, but always that it has a, it has a connection to all the other music making that's going on. It doesn't sit alone, rarefied. Yeah. Um, it's, it's something that's going to It's a combined enhance. program. I mean, while at NYU students actually experience a combination of instruments, not just the steel pan, but they're conventional right. as well. And so they have that experience even before they leave. So they are actually equipped in some uh, ways better than some traditional steel pan players who don't have that opportunity to be exposed and interact with conventional orchestra. So that's pretty good. Right. Now, my, my goal was not, uh, my goal was to have steel pan so they would have an additional, additional experience, talent, and ability to bring in a type of music that very few people in New York City can do. And as you, you're absolutely correct, to combine it with marimba and vibraphone yeah. and xylophone and timpani and all that stuff, uh, that's, a, that's a rare talent to be mm -hmm. able to do all of that. Indeed. Um, when you first started, and probably still to date, this is the first and only major undertaking and engagement of an educational institution of this level with the steel pan instrument and also making it mandatory. I, uh, you, you might be right. I, on the uh, Eastern Seaboard. On oh, the Eastern I mean, Seaboard. Yeah. On the Eastern Seaboard, yeah. Yes. Because Larry seaboard. Snyder, of course, has his ensemble. Yeah. I certainly wouldn't mm -hmm. want to take anything yeah. away from him. And Liam Teague has a superb right. program. But in terms of the Eastern Illinois. Seaboard and. We got the Eastern major, Seaboard. We, it's the Eastern we Seaboard. Got it. No, it's the Eastern <laughs> Seaboard we're talking about. We'll take about. it. No, no, we don't. Yeah, <laughs> indeed. So, I mean, if I were to say, where do you see the program in five years or ten years from now, given the outstanding success it's been. What would be your thoughts? Well, um, the long vision is, of course, uh, more pans, more players, more music. Mm -hmm. But I, where, where I see it going for NYU students in particular um, is that there are a lot of composers now who would never have thought to write for the <laughs> instrument. And I think we're going to see a repertoire we're going to see mm -hmm. compositions now that are going to be much more inclusive in, a ver in the, the modern language um, combined with the incredible historic uh, sounds. Origins of, uh, of the steel pan. Sure. Yeah. I mean, that, Let's that's Let's talk the about best. that, uh, some of the repertoire that you've engaged in throughout the years, because it's been varied. There have been no uh, pigeonholing, per se, right. of uh, selections. I mean, who's responsible for the selections? I mean, you've got classics, you've got original compositions, you've got some of the students arranging. You play traditional uh, calypso from Trinidad and Tobago, uh, the composers there, and also Bach. You have uh, Philip Glass. I mean, it's a very eclectic mix. Kendall Williams. Kendall Williams. Well, yeah, original composers as well. Yeah. yeah. So you talk about him. Well, there, the, there's a lot of different branches to this tree of, mm -hmm. you know, with, with one trunk. And uh, Kendall Williams let's, is a good example. He was a, a student Here. at NYU, yeah. composition student, but he always coming upstairs and wanted to know what was going on. Mm -hmm. And when he found out we had a pan, Ensemble, he wanted to be very much a part of that because he played before. I mean, he oh, grew up playing pan exactly as a little person, <laughs> right? And so, what he did is that he helped everybody raise the bar of quality because they all went, Well, Kendall knows what he's doing, mm -hmm. right. so he's nobody a, was fooling around or just he's kind of working in his up. doctorate right now at Princeton, right? So, right, right. We're very proud of him, yeah. And he brought in some of the first pieces that combined traditional Western percussion instruments with steel pan. Okay. In fact, it went as far as the American Composers Orchestra, which I'm a member of. Uh, he was a composer in residence. So he had this collaboration with the American Composers Orchestra mm -hmm. to pick a venue to do a concert of his and own. it was here. And he picked us. Yeah, that was last year. Yeah, and we so played on the Bang on a Can mm -hmm. uh, marathon mm -hmm. and did his piece. So Kendall's a good example of 
five years from now, we're going to be playing a lot of his music, and uh, Liam Teague, of course, is, yes. a, is a fantastic composer, composer and arranger. And I think everybody just wants to expand the repertoire. And I think that the instruments are expanding too. On the top of the expansion, 25 current members or on average right now in the right, orchestra? Well, next year is going to be 25. Okay, and do you see this perhaps expanding given the popularity and... No, we'll, we'll explode. We won't be able to... So are you we can't go much further. <laughs> well, in that case, what I was hoping for and I was going to ask further down the line, I might as well ask now, I was wondering if at some point there would be any consideration to the alumni of NYU Steel coming back together absolutely, and perhaps giving a mass concert performance regardless of which line of work they're in right now but if there could be something like that somewhere in the future perhaps on an anniversary uh, of, of a particular event and I think so a great idea you could have like maybe, how many people are we talking in that case there's going to be a lot oh there's, there's going to be a lot but we're growing as it is yeah. because we have now found our way into the Brooklyn Pan Yards, and they've been and very welcoming. And we're talking, for instance, Crossfire. You of guys course. actually, in two capacities, 2013 NYU Steel went to the New York Panorama in Brooklyn. That's right. As the opening act, the guest artist, mm -hmm. and then a lot of your students have participated in the 2014 Panorama with Crossfire Steel Orchestra. Right. And now Crossfire's coming to NYU to the join us. Talk about that, because there were two other um, orchestras uh, who performed downstairs in the Frederick Laus Theater together with NYU, with the Sonatas and I think PS161. But what has really cemented or uh, aided in the growth of the collaboration, ongoing collaboration between NYU Steel and Crossfire Steel Orchestra. The key to this success is the openness, the the friendship, and the interest of those ensembles that are made of people who really are experts at this, recognizing that we're both learning, trying very hard, and, and in many cases we're being very successful, and they've reached out to us. What um, are your observations and thoughts on the uh, skill sets of the Crossfire Steel Orchestra members as they interact with NYU Steel, given that NYU Steel, of course, everyone reads music, and in Crossfire, some read and probably will still be learning, right. and they play by rote, though. How is that interaction at times, and how is it ongoing? The, it's a combination of the organic music making mm -hmm. yeah, okay. that is as a result of your cultural background in combination of with young exuberant musicians who Exuberance. sometimes for the first time yeah. are experiencing this very uplifting music and when you put those two elements together it is a fantastic it just, it just combination. Okay. But you remember that when Crossfire played my students are sitting there staring and observing and taking in the part of it that isn't necessarily part of their background because some of some of my students have never even seen pan until they get here on mm -hmm. you know day one and we throw them into the fire it's like yeah. all right you know you've got you've got six parts to learn and you're playing the cellos and the what are tenors. some of those experiences like in a nutshell the first time well, who have no clue as to what the steel pan instrument is about. Oh, I think I think that they are uh, they are incredibly uh, uh, nervous yeah. and and apprehensive and doubting. How am I going to ever do this? I'm looking I'm looking at a uh, at an oil can with uh, indentations in it. How, what am I going to How am I mm -hmm. going to make music out of that? And they're also thinking, well, aren't I supposed to be making music on the marimba and the vibraphone? Isn't that what I'm here for? Mm -hmm. And it, o it only takes about, I'd say it takes a month for, for them to have absolutely forgotten that they were so concerned about it. Right. Now next year, uh, this happens every other year, we're playing at the Drum Boogie Festival up in Woodstock. Mm -hmm. So this is going to be on September 12th. Classes start the first week in September. So I have some students who have two weeks to learn a one-hour set okay. of music. Now we're gentle with them, huh. right? So we'll—they'll be given parts that they're 
you know they're able to do okay. for the for the absolute rote beginners we'll put them in the back and give them a cowbell and let them be a part of it that yeah, way do, just real good flow yeah. but we're finding more and more students are coming to NYU with steel pan experience okay. so they just come in and we have three students coming in who've all told me they're ready to solo well, that's pretty good because yeah. nobody soloed in, in our <laughs> ensemble except Josh because nobody knew how. And you saw Russell Fisher last year, for yeah. instance. He's mm -hmm. starting to take real solos. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it, it's really wonderful to see that happen. And, of course, the, just the joy on everybody's face when they're playing mm -hmm. and they do a little choreography. Yeah, choreography is getting part of it. Oh, th On the topic of choreography, um, for the... Brooklyn Panorama, what was the experience like for your students, NYU Steel, to be in the pan yard on a fairly, uh, I would say frequent, in some cases nightly basis, coming up to the panorama and actually participating in the competition? Well, their, uh, their description of the experience was <laughs> twofold. The first was they were felt really honored to have been able to play. Mm -hmm. Um, as a warm-up ensemble but really what they were taken by was the sound of the full ensembles who were competing and what that experience was like and many of them as you said were part of those large ensembles and they all came back really saying we have never been part of such a human experience as being in a, in a large pan ensemble mm -hmm. and that's why what we're doing now is making our concerts with as many like-minded people as possible. So it's not just 24. When we get up to 36, 40, 40, 50, now we're talking. Well, I'm looking forward to like about 100 of the NYU Steel well, alumni at some point. You know what? More. You know what our problem is? Is, <laughs> is the is the <laughs> fire marshal? That's our only problem. Is the fire marshal? We'll, we can't need, we'll need a bigger venue, and you'll need to contract out some more instruments, and the whole alumni concert can come together. I think that's going to be something worth looking forward to. Sure. Now that's that's the first part of your answer. The second part is that we need to go to Trinidad. Right, that was supposed to have happened in 2012 yeah. but with the state of emergency that that's kind of right. scuttled things. So that's still on uh, we, uh, the we, charts. We, okay. must, we need to go to Trinidad. That yeah. is. Now, some of the students are going with Josh this summer. They're going, okay. they're going I think, four or five students are going to go with him and Kendall Williams. I'm not sure what they're doing, but they're going to play in a pan yard. And, okay. Uh, but we need to go down. The panorama. Yeah. I hear you. Right. CD, 2011. Philip Glass, have you guys done any um, more music productions in terms of CD since then? Nope, that's the only CD we've done is the, uh, the piano etudes. Mm -hmm. And of course, it's time. I and agree. Given, given that we have 25 <laughs> uh, musicians, and, and plus we can add Crossfire and all of our other friends, I would predict that this is a recording year. It's, it, it's, and we're going to be having 11 of our students graduating. Which means that a year from now, when we're sitting here yeah. talking, we're going to have a really new ensemble. Yes. So we're going to we're going to do very much like you've described, which mm -hmm. will probably invite some alum mm -hmm. to come back and really do a super concert. concert. And it's, yeah. and we're we're going to do we'll do a recording. Excellent. That sounds great. Um, down the line, any thoughts of potentially NYU offering? steel pan as a major I mean you do have your bachelor's of music masters of music and your doctoral in music composition but in terms of a major is there any potential for that down the line uh, I, I don't want to say no but it won't be on my watch okay um, I think that what's going on at Univers University of Illinois I think that that's the epicenter for a okay. degree program headed by the greatest teacher and player um, Josh Quillen is a member of So Percussion, yeah. and he is very, very busy. How he fits us into a schedule, I don't know, but he does because he loves it so much. So what, what it's doing in my program, it's going to remain and flourish in the program, but for there to be a, a, a standalone, I think we'll let Liam continue to okay. be the leader on that. But you do understand that New York being the center of things some people might be wondering and hoping at some point that somewhere sometime that there is uh, 
an opportunity for a degree program somewhere a little bit more familiar. I think it yeah. would be. A, it's a great idea, um, and facilities is a huge, huge. part of this. And yeah. believe me, to, to be in the penthouse is rare because I've spent most of my career in the basement. Right? <laughs> you get that? So uh, we're happy to be here. But no, I, 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 it's something I would support 100%. Mm -hmm. But it's got to be done right. You yeah. have to have the facilities. You have to have the faculty. fans. You have the faculty. faculty you have to have the courses key. that go with yeah. it. So is it anything? It's a it's a great dream, and uh, it's being done well in, in one place. And if you can do it equally, Northern if not Illinois better, University with Liam and Cliff Alexis. Yeah, I mean, it's, yeah. it's like mm -hmm. that's where you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Any thoughts at all regarding the Steel Pan Art Forum? Um, that we've not touched on but that you would like to table or anything like that? Well, um, my observations about one of the things we didn't talk about was is this really successful okay. in terms of uh, from a pedagogical standpoint? Sorry to use university talk but they like to talk about pedagogy, okay, about yes. teaching and uh, the answer is it far surpassed what I thought was going to happen in terms of everybody's, their ears, their ability to hear. It affected their ensemble playing. Of course, the inner rhythm, the inner clock. Um, and really, what was the most exciting part of the success of this that I wasn't necessarily expecting is that it's, they, they play these instruments as a tremendous release from, at times, a week of stress, a lot of stress. Yes and grades and I got finals and I have this juries and things like that and it's a it, it's an instrument uh, of great catharsis mm -hmm. and my great students release, use yeah. it as that and the music that goes along with it is so it's so joyful yeah we can tell from uh, their, their enjoyment in certain uh, pieces especially when it comes time for the closing finales right we can see from when they're on stage how joyful they are generally, but when it comes to the closing, the finale, I mean, it's just an entire release, very cathartic, yeah. as you said. And, I mean, the joy that they exude, it's, you can compare it sometimes to a panorama performance, especially if they are doing a panorama arrangement. It's just a time for them to say, we're here, we're in the here and now. And right. I mean, you can tell that the steel band instrument crosses so many uh, cultures, so many people, so many races. It's just beautiful. It surpasses a language. So I think NYU, um, when we see you guys on stage, that really comes across. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, it, it, it comes across. One thing I think we should actually touch on as well is the fact that all your students are required to play all the available voices in the steel pan instrument family. It's not to say, well, you know, one can learn maybe the tenor, the double tenor, the, you know, the cello or the bass. They're all expected to have yes. an all-around experience on each instrument and also the percussive sections. And that's evident from your concert performances where you see the members going back and forth all around, and not just a couple pans, but We'll have like Adam who's just here on drums, and he'll be on tenor, and then mm -hmm. you know he'll be doing something else. He'll be on bass, and he's a, a great example of that. I think that needs to be uh, also uh, brought to the fore. Right. Well, what's going to happen for my students? What I hope for them is that they're going to get a call from a Broadway contractor. I want you to play a new show coming into town, and you got to play some steel drums. Mm -hmm. The contractors don't know; they just know what it sounds like. And I want my students to be able to say, sure, whatever you got. And then if they so, then the contractor says, oh, do you play the Sopranos or the, whatever it is. My students go, oh, you know, I only learned the okay. bass pans. Now Instead, they go, sure. sure now this is how they're going to make a living, mm -hmm. is being able to do things like that. Tell us about some of the students who have maintained their uh, steel orchestra uh, contacts and... Uh, I should say, music experience when they depart because they are percussive majors, but some actually continue in this path. They all take it with them. It's not possible to yeah. leave it at the door here. Hmm. And, I, and I've asked, I've checked in about, oh, do you still, still, do you still play steel pan? And there isn't anybody who said, no, you know what, I, I, I let it go. 
and you would be release. surprised how much variety and use of the steel pans that they're thinking about. Mm -hmm. I'm still waiting for a student to come along and I think maybe this is going to be the year where they also want to learn about managing a steel the pan. Business or aspect. The business yeah. aspect of it because we can all play until sunset and uh, mm -hmm. beyond but there's somebody has to be somebody or a number of people who yeah. are involved with mm -hmm. helping get the word out. What you're doing for goodness sakes I mean I don't know any organization such as uh, when steel talks who's giving so much coverage to an art form that without you and and what you're doing I don't I don't think people would know half as much as they do about the culture the music the access to oh well where do I go to a concert and mm -hmm. what happened when I went to a concert mm -hmm. so we need young people doing what you're doing uh, in a managerial and a business way indeed and I, I'm looking for that that's actually part of my five-year plan excellent that's going to be good very very good you have a key performance coming up it's going to be NYU Steel and ballet talk a bit about that we are going to collaborate with New York Theatre Ballet, which is mm -hmm. one of the preeminent ballet companies. Okay. A choreographer in San Francisco has been hired to choreograph the piano etudes of Philip Glass oh, nice. that we recorded for Steel Pan. Mm -hmm. So for us, this is sort of our world premiere out in the real, in the professional right. world. Uh, and of course, for the dancers, this is going to be a great opportunity. I predict this project could go worldwide. We, we could tour this around the world. It's we going to be would, so good. We would love to see that. Yeah, I'm, I'm working on that. Excellent. That's part my. of my plan. We'll see what happens, yeah. but okay. at least you'll get in New York next February. Sounds like a plan. Oh, Professor Jonathan Hass, it has been excellent to sit down and have this time with you and to talk about your role in the steel pan art form, pan in New York, and also the work of NYU Steel. Thank you very much for always allowing When Steel Talks to be part of your performances and to be part of the growing experience here at NYU. Thank you again. My pleasure, and what an honor it is to have you uh, come here and give us the sort of support you do, because you're helping us grow, and we'll follow that lead. We enjoy that so very much. The talent and the hospitality is just fantastic. Thank you again, and we will be always in contact. Thank you. We'll see you next year. Indeed.